here today at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex Junction with Seth Adam Manley. I'm Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter, and we are trying to interview all candidates running for office connected to Essex or Essex Junction. And we, in, we also invited Karen Dolan and Lori Houghton, and they both declined. This is going to be a very difficult battle for you, running against two very popular incumbents. Mm -hmm. um, and you're a Republican. Yeah. Um, what are your goals for if you do win this election? Right. You know, you know that's an interesting uh, question. Uh, you know, I've heard that from a, a couple people that, you know, uh, maybe this would be a tough race. And I feel a lot of strong support, you know, at least 70 or 80 percent of the people I talk to are, you know, saying, yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure if I like what's been going on. And so, yeah, I'm definitely going to give you a consideration. So there I know I've got a lot of eyes on me and uh, people are looking at, you know, what I've got to say. My goal would be to try to put some common sense um, and balance. You know, uh, it seems like a lot of things have just been getting pushed through without any debate, kind of one-sided stuff that is counterproductive to what the people of Vermont really are talking about. So. Such as? Well, you know, uh, a lot of this environmental, uh, like the carbon tax issue, uh, a lot of it stem, uh, kind of centered around the, uh, uh, you know, Global Warming Act. Not all of it's good, I don't believe, so. What do you feel are the biggest issues facing Vermonters? Uh, definitely cost of living uh, comes up almost with everybody I talk to. Um, and uh, that goes to a lot of different aspects of cost of living. You know, health care costs have gone up tremendously. I've talked to several people that are, you know, thinking that they're going to have to sell their home in order to keep paying the bills for the, to take care of their loved ones. And, you know, they're not too happy about that. Uh, uh, also, uh, food prices have gone up. Uh, there's a little bit of food insecurity, although a lot of the people that I have a chance to talk to aren't too concerned about that, but uh, it is there. Um, and just the cost of uh, uh, taxes and, uh, uh, you know, price that we pay to heat our homes, those sorts of things. And how would you address some of that, um, I guess, specifically housing, because that is a question that's brought up there. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, of course, when I'm canvassing, a lot of times I'll be knocking on doors of homes where, well, people are already established there. Um, uh, I do run into a number of people that are, you know, in rental situations and so forth uh, that really are having a hard time getting their foot in the door with stable housing. Uh, about my main idea, a lot of people are talking about uh, deregulation as a way to uh, lower the cost of uh, housing. Um, unfortunately, in the last term, they tried to put through a, uh, some new regulations uh, on landlords, which, you know, by all accounts, seem to uh, would produce a higher <laughs> rental prices uh, as opposed to lowering the rental prices, just because the extra burden and regulation that the landlords would have to go through, uh, you know, they would have to raise their rates. Um, it would make it more difficult to find uh, rental housing. So I definitely I would want to keep something like that from getting passed um, and just look at deregulating, uh, making it easier for people to offer housing so that they, you know, maybe uh, we should look at tax breaks for landlords as opposed to raising the landlord's taxes. Um, obviously the landlords will have to pass the cost of their taxes along to their, you know, tenants. So. That's one thing we could look at, you know, for immediate relief. You mentioned health care affordability. Right. Do you have any ideas along those lines? Uh, yeah. What I would look for would be to, de you know, again, deregulate the health care industry. And um, as I've said in the past, I, I strongly believe we need to get the government out of the health care industry as much as possible. And, you know, sure, you know, I think we should have, you know, as far as quality and uh, to make sure there aren't charlatans or something like that practicing. 
but I don't believe the government's place is in controlling every aspect of the healthcare industry. Um, it just creates a huge burden for the providers. I think if we can get rid of that, it would help. In the long so run. then you wouldn't be a fan of Medicare for all? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that, yep. Um, basically, every time the government's tried to get involved with the healthcare industry, costs have gone up. And I mean, we saw that uh, dramatically with uh, like when they put in uh, uh, affordable health care for all, uh, most people saw their costs go way up, both for insurance and for the cost of the care itself. What else would you like to tell us about yourself? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, I guess the only thing, you know, I am a, a pretty much a lifelong Vermonter. I'm a native Vermonter, grew up here in Johnson, uh, you know, did some work on a, a dairy farm. Uh, my sister married a farmer and spent a lot of time there. I wasn't involved with the management, but uh, you know, so I, I do understand some of the concerns and I think uh, uh, Malloy has been talking about, you know, we need to help out our dairy farms. Um, I think having a stable, good agricultural system is important, not just for our farmers, but I mean for us as people, you know, so we have a good local source of food. <laughs> Um, so that's another issue. You know, about myself, uh, you know, I am also, uh, uh, I ran my own small business for 15 years, uh, so I know a lot of the challenges associated with that. Um, and, you know, I'm curious, what is yeah. your business? Uh, I was actually a plumbing and heating service provider, yeah. Um, given the huge increase in um, gun violence in the city of Burlington, most especially lately. Um, even though that's not really a big issue for your district necessarily, it is a statewide issue. Um, where are you on the spectrum of two-way versus gun control? And mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, you know, and I, it is a concern and like you said, we don't see a lot right now in, in the Essex Junction area, uh, but it does affect us. You know, I think twice about going to Burlington. And I've talked to a lot of people as well that think twice about going to Burlington to enjoy any of the amenities uh, down there. So it does affect us somewhat. Now, I'm definitely a strong 2A uh, uh, supporter. Um, I think we've got plenty of laws on the books right now to regulate guns, um, you know, I'm fairly comfortable with most of the ones they've got in place. Yeah, I wasn't too thrilled about the magazine restriction that they put in, but you know, we can all agree, you know, everybody doesn't need a hundred round clip to go hunting or, or whatnot, or even for self-defense. So I'm happy with the existing laws, um, and I really think that what we need to do is uh, again enforce the laws that are on the books. Um, Prevention, part of the prevention should be uh, just enforcing the laws to make it clear to people that uh, may have, you know, bad intentions that they're not going to get away with anything. In order to do that, we, we really need to make it uh, uh, safe uh, for our policemen, uh, you know, by lowering the number of guys we've got on the street, it kind of makes an unsafe environment for them, and I'm really, you know, I'm glad that the guys that we've got are sticking with it, frankly. Um, so we need to support our law enforcement. Um, and that does mean, you know, uh, I understand there's some concerns about, you know, police doing inappropriate things. You know, uh, there's no reason we can't provide good training and support for them. And, you know, maybe if we give them more support, they would be less likely to commit, you know, bad things themselves. So. At the national level, there's a huge fracturing within the Republican Party. Mm. How is that affecting us on the local level and you running as a Republican? Sure. You know, and I think that's a pretty interesting question. I haven't really been involved in politics before. I just started getting involved, you know, last spring, April, May timeframe. Uh, and I do see, you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on at the national level. But, you know, in my time of being involved uh, with 
local uh, Republican committees and county and even state somewhat, I really don't see any fracturing. I think there's a good amount of healthy debate, you know, about what we should do as a party. Um, and I think the debate's really healthy and, you know, we need to talk about all these things. Um, but I don't really see any uh, back, you know, back blow from the national stuff going on locally in the state. Seems pretty, pretty solid to me. When we met at the hot dog event, you mentioned um, the integrity of the voting process. Do you want to talk some more about that? I'd like to put in a plug in for uh, the First Republic Brewery for allowing us to host that. That was real nice of them. And, but yeah, as far as election integrity, um, I've been talking to quite a few people in the state and, and the area, uh, and it seems to be what's happened is, uh, whereas we had a system that's worked very well for hundreds of years, you know, with our voting system, you know, where most, most of the voting took place in person. During the pandemic, uh, they added these rules about the mass mail ballots. They've also, in the recent years, added the uh, uh, machine counting tabulator uh, laws. Uh, so it looks to us like uh, they've tacked on a bunch of stuff onto the existing laws without thinking through how it's going to affect integrity. Um, it's, it's our job as citizens to make sure that our voting is safe and secure. Um, so we're, we're taking a look at what we can do locally. Um, I've talk, been in touch with some of the other uh, you know, caucuses around the state. And I've talked to quite a few people that are concerned about it. And I just want to say, you know, we, we haven't uncovered anything that's, uh, you know, untoward or anything. And uh, I want to put everybody at ease that, you know, we're working on it. And if need be, we'll propose legislation uh, in the coming years to correct any deficiencies in the existing, the system that, that's been created now. So. Thank you for being here with us today, Seth. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate the opportunity. And again, he is running for state rep from Chittenden 22. Yep. And I'm Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter.